Mega Mechatronics. Welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. Today we are going to look at methanol and water mixtures and how to measure the methanol content in these mixtures. And the reason we want to do this is to check for quality from off the shelf like Snow Performance and Double Zone. Um, they are unregulated bodies and this is a fuel to uh, help your engine not explode so you sort of want to ensure quality and also we can uh, to uh, test out some mixtures like this uh, the blue washer fluid plus heat mixture we'll try that out and uh, it'd be good to sort of measure that and, and ensure quality and that's typical if you tune your engine on the edge of performance on the edge of knock uh, where this isn't just a safety factor, this is preventing your engine from actually blowing up. Uh, you're going to want some way of confirming the content. And there are some easy acid tests that I'll show you as well. So let's get into this. And now let's take a look at some DIY testing methods I came across that are some potential ways that you can measure methanol water content. So the first way we have up here is to measure the density and that density is a uh, mass and volume. So if we can measure the mass and if we can measure the volume, uh, then we can derive density. So we have a scale, a graduated cylinder and our specimen uh, depicted in green right there. Um, another way is we can use a hydrometer or a hydrometer um, and that's basically uh, the principle of buoyancy and how far um, a calibrated uh, hydrometer has like a weight in the bottom with maybe some beads or some like metal beads or something to get a precise calibration. They have a scale and then the way you can get the specific gravity um, or some other measurements and other scales but it's basically how deep does that uh, go so the the meter will sink more the less dense liquid is or the more um, you've seen uh, some YouTube channels where the guy messes with mercury and uh, some heavy metals can actually float on top of it uh, because the heavier the liquid the, the less buoyant this will be and, and the higher it will be up um, so it's moving on to the to the next type of method is using a refractometer and uh, I put a characterized ethanol because I have a meter for ethanol based or alcohols uh, like alcohols that you can consume methanol is a type of eth uh, alcohol methyl alcohol methanol uh, but you cannot consume that as poisonous uh, if you drink it it creates toxins and or formaldehyde and all this bad stuff you don't want to drink. Uh, so that's denatured alcohol. They add methanol to denature it so that people don't drink it and uh, it's actually cheaper because they don't tax it. There's no alcohol taxes on it. So and then so we'll characterize so with our ethanol meter we since I have pure methanol to confirm or not a very very high content uh, above 99 percent content of methanol we can characterize this and come up with um, uh, a new scale and the way that a refractometer works is it uses this concept where uh, light changes direction um, at an interface between two different mediums two different mediums could be a solid and a gas uh, or, or a liquid and a gas and it, it's using this critical angle um, at to where where internal reflection starts to happen so it's it's taking that scientific concept and puts it into an engineered solution here where the the test specimen in the green is there um, light passes through that then through a prism and some other uh, lenses and then it hits a scale and then you can kind of see there there's less blue uh, down here and there's more of that shadow kind of up there um, so it's using this crit that critical angle is what's controlling this angle of, of where that bottom arrow would be and how much of that scale is filled. Um, and then we come down to our kind of our two acid tests. I've classified three and four as a, a, a type of acid test. 
uh, just uh, a quick way to check the quality. So fire, we'll put it on, I'll put it on like a quarter or something, put a drop, and then we'll use a lighter to light it and then see if it relights it. So kind of like we use the flint to light the sample and then if the sample is burning, it should be able to light the lighter uh, when I hit the gas uh, on the lighter. Um, and then the fourth method is freezing. It's very simple. We'll put it in our freezer, uh, or if you live in very frigid climates, uh, you may be able to do that. So something less than, than freezing temps, uh, and uh, it, if it has any methanol in there, it should not freeze. Uh, but we'll see what contents uh, and what temperatures will freeze. We have a temperature gauge inside of the freezer. Uh, so those are the methods, and uh, let's start cracking. And here we go. I'm going to go through and show you uh, and uh, talk to you about how I measured this stuff. So in the next video, we don't really have to focus on the measurement methods. So this is sort of an introduction video. So here's some distilled water I had uh, in stock. And I'll do a little test later to confirm. And here I'm trying to characterize the level of fluid because we know that at 20 degrees Celsius, water, 100 grams of water is equal to 100 milliliters of water volume wise. So here we have our TDS with temperature compensation and we read zeros for PPM. So we're measuring parts per million. And here's some tap water and you can see it was reading over 100. So again, here's that level and the camera picked up picks up uh, something different than what you see with your eyes so I sort of to me it looked higher uh, because it it didn't have that shadow like this camera picked up uh, from the water wicking up the side so to me I perceived it as higher so that's how you'll see in some of the test footage I'll slow it down when I show you the level of where it's at so you can see you know there's going to be a few percentage of error total added up from all, all these different errors I'm adding by doing this by hand and uh, kind of DIY style. But the temperature is within a degree. You'll typically see that. So there is that temperature gauge running in the background. And here we have our hydrometer. So it's uh, kind of difficult to see this one. Uh, especially with the containers. So this is a challenge I had. So you really need a larger volume of fluid of, of specimen and a correct container. So I already knew it really wasn't going to work out. So we'll, we'll be playing around with that, but I end up doing it in the graduated cylinder and I do sort of get an idea. And since I measured everyone the same, um, they, it's sort of an apples apples comparison, even though there's probably an offset in the measurement. So here is the refractometer, the refractometer, and we'll get a still shot here. Uh, the GoPro knockoff did not like that. So we, uh, we're at zero and that's how you calibrate this particular uh, device. And here we'll take a sample of, for our test tube, of the water. And this is 100% distilled. So in the next episode, you're going to see, we're going to get in deep with these other products. We're going to see what does one bottle of heat do to a gallon of blue washer fluid and we'll check out these off the shelf water methanol 50 50 type mixtures and check out their quality so stick around for part two and we'll have a pretty cool special bonus part three after that all right thanks guys and gals for sticking around and i'll see you next time